There's a sense that the Republican Party doesn't like different types of individuals, that kind of difference, uh, whether it's gay people or minorities, that, you know, right. they see, they want a standard issue American. How do, how right. do you, how do you well, respond I would, to that? I would, boy, the Republicans are about empowering everyone. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and we're at the Reboot Conference in San Francisco. We're talking with Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers. She's one of the keynote speakers, a representative of the 5th Congressional District in Spokane. Uh, Republican Kathy McMorris Rogers, thanks for talking to us. Thanks, good to be with you. Why should the tech industry, I mean, the Reboot Conference is, is talking about uh, bringing uh, uh, the tech industry uh, and Republicans, conservatives, libertarians together. Why should the tech industry be receptive to the GOP? Well, because because the GOP is the party that is about empowering people, individuals. Mm -hmm. It is about ideas, uh, promoting innovation, entrepreneurship, startups, right. uh, new new ideas. It's uh, I like to think yeah. that we're the party that is about uh, pursuing new ways and. Right. And how do we improve people's so lives? So let's, I mean, I, yes. you know, that's certainly the rhetoric. And then there's a sense that the Republican Party is kind of old and backward looking, uh, you know, that it's longingly looking at a golden age in the past always. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you get past that kind of perception of well, the Republican? And that's, that's where I think that the Republicans, is very important that we are embracing uh, this new, new, that we're embracing technology, mm -hmm. that we're embracing the spirit of innovation, and that we're embracing what, this new approach can offer to us as Republicans in the agenda that we have long been promoting that is a is limited government and it's, mm -hmm. it's individual it's empowering individuals and uh, and promoting uh, entrepreneurship so I guess as as Republicans it really is up to us to embrace what technology can offer both in engaging people as well as public policy. Here's a question for you. You know, the Republican Party, I mean, t technology, one of the mm -hmm. great things that it does is it allows you to individualize and personalize things yes. in ways that were unimaginable even 10 or 15 years ago. There's a sense that the Republican Party doesn't like different types of individuals, that kind of difference, uh, whether it's gay people or mm -hmm. minorities that, you right. know, they see they want a standard issue American. How do, how right. do you how do you well, respond would, to that? I would boy, the Republicans are about empowering everyone, mm -hmm. individuals, no matter who you are, no matter your background, and we we have to reach out to people yeah. across this country. We got to make sure that that the face of the Republican Party is one that reflects the 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 diversity that we see across this country and that and that people see <clears throat> Republicans representing every background every walk of life we're we're younger than the Democrats in yeah, the house so what do you mean does by anybody that? know yeah. that no what you does know? that mean well it means that we are five years on average younger in uh -huh. the house we have 27 members under 40 we have mm -hmm. Hispanics we have women and yeah. that's where I think so often we we don't do a very good job of maybe marketing ourselves mm -hmm. of promoting that our face is a broad right. face that represents every corner of this country, every background. What are the big technology issues? Uh, not about companies, but in, in your district, what are, what are some of the technologies or innovations that you see that are being stifled by federal regulations? Well, you just see time and time again where the federal government gets in the way. Mm -hmm. It's making it difficult to move forward on anything. What, it, working through a permitting process mm -hmm. or the regulatory process, it, it is not promoting the new ideas, the new mm -hmm. approaches, new innovation, uh, you know, and uh, you know, everyone likes to point right now to Uber and yeah. what it what it has offered, and and that's just one example. But that's where uh, we need to be uh, the party that is embracing the, the the what technology can offer in every industry, and we certainly see where it has just revolutionized. Do you? I mean, with something like Uber, or Airbnb, yes. uh, you know, do these not? I mean, they challenge regulatory frameworks, right? Where I mean, in a way, oh, the yes. government is no longer even necessary because Uber regulates itself; it regulates its driver; right. it even regulates its customers. Is the Republican Party comfortable kind of going large with that and saying, you know, what these are? You know, we don't need the government to be regulating our business. We don't need it to be regulating our social life. Well, I, it's, the, it's the Republican Party that believes in a limited role mm -hmm. for the federal government and really um, keeping decision making at the local level. And, and I think as much as that the regulation that's mm -hmm. needed, keep it local. Keep it at the mm -hmm. city, the county level, the state level. 
Uh, the idea of the federal government knowing better or the one-size-fits-all, top-down approach. Republicans so, believe in a bottom-up approach. Does that include things like abortion and gay marriage? I mean, where, where are those? Should those be decided at the individual level, at the local level? Should they be outside of politics altogether? Well, I think you're seeing more and more where, you know, take uh, the whole issue related to uh, same-sex marriage. And, uh, and I think you're, you're seeing where the Republicans are saying, well, let's leave that at the state level, allow mm -hmm. states to decide what is, what's best. And, um, and the idea of these federal government policies would be more limited. So, I mean, would you be comfortable with, the, I mean, the National Republican Party just saying, you know what, uh, the federal government has never really defined marriage. It should just not even be dealing with that. Well, there's, I think there's a, a I think we need to look at who is defining marriage. I'm someone that does believe in marriage as being between a man and a woman, mm -hmm. but there's a there's a question as to civil unions mm -hmm. and and what is legally needed, where the government right. should be involved in uh, making these decisions and recognizing certain would you uh, be unions. comfortable then I mean uh, you know recognizing that marriage is uh, uh, maybe marriage is a religious institution uh, and and churches individual churches should govern that but then should the federal government recognize civil unions between two men or two women well that's a, that's a debate that's going on right now within the party Reason uh, Foundation just uh, conducted a poll, a national poll of about 2,400 uh, millennials, 18 to 29 year old voters. 22% of the millennials said that they were either Republican or lean that way, compared to about 40% of the overall uh, older voters. About 43% of millennials lean Democratic or are Democratic versus 49%. If the GOP remains the part, or perceived as a party that is kind of hostile to gay rights or marriage equality, hostile to um, legalization of pot, uh, hostile to the immigrate uh, to immigrants, uh, can it go forward? I mean, will it, will that twenty two percent crop up, or like how how is the U, how is the Republican Party going to grow its market share among millennials? Well, the, the the Republican Party must be seen as a party that is about empowering people, individuals and families, and allowing them to make better decisions for themselves mm -hmm. than the federal government ever can. And it needs to be a party that, you know, this idea that we're anti-immigrant. Mm -hmm. I mean, the history of this country is one that has, uh, it's a history of people coming from around the world to pursue the right. opportunities that this country has to offer. And that's that's what the Republican Party has to be about. We have yeah. to continue to talk about the the opportunities that this country has to offer to, but then, to are, every are you, person. Are you uncomfortable with some of the rhetoric from people? I mean, Steve King of Iowa, for instance, is, is extremely and openly hostile to Mexican immigrants. I mean, is, is that a problem for the party? We, you know, he does not, he, his, his position does not reflect the, the broad view of Republicans all across this country. We believe that we need to fix what is a, a broken immigration system and that those that want to come here for the short term or the long term can do so. Now, it's also important uh, that you know, we, we secure our border and, and obviously what's going on right now at the border only screams that yeah. we, we need to get in place and build the trust with the American people that they have some confidence that the federal government is doing its job. And in this case, it's one where it's uh, making sure that the uh, border is secure. Final, final question. The Export-Import Bank is coming up for reauthorization. It is uh, by people like Kevin McCarthy, the new House Majority Leader, said he's going to vote, he's going to put it down. Uh, this is a, a, a program that uh, gives subsidies to con uh, foreign countries to buy American products. Uh, Eric Cantor re was, led the reauthorization in 2012. Are you in favor of reauthorizing the Export-Import Bank, and do you think that that's a big issue that Republicans need to be on one side or the other on? Well, I, I'm someone that I did vote two years ago for the reauthorization of the Import-Export Bank. You know, there were some reforms attached to that, mm -hmm. um, transparency and uh, other reforms that this administration has never implemented. And that's it's another example where the trust is broken mm -hmm. and the administration is not doing what it is supposed to do under the law of the land. And so we're, we're working through. I think uh, uh, there's some questions that need to be answered. And, and um, So have you made a decision yet? Are you going to vote to reauthorize the Export-Import Bank in, in September or, or are well, you still? Well, we're, I'll see what that looks like when, when it comes. Okay. 
All right. Well, thank you very much. I want to thank uh, Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers of the 5th Congressional District of Washington State for talking to Reason TV. I'm Nick Gillespie.